Hello, this is your virtual life coach, Michael Lewis. This is what I look like. Let's talk about games. Let's look at life as a game. Let's look at what you're going after, a relationship, a marriage, business opportunity, or, you know, just going lippity-boo through life as a game. Some games are fun. Some games aren't. Some games we want to play and we play them, and some games we don't want to play, and we play them, and some games we we want to play and we don't play them, and some games we just kind of get rained out. But all games have some common features. The three basic ones that are common to all games are a playing field, one or more obstacles, and the final ultimate goal or aim or target, the whole reason for it. So let's rapidly cover each of these three things. Playing field. Okay, what's your playing field? Your playing field would be the territory that you can move around in. You know, like in most uh, ball type games like soccer, baseball, tennis, and whatnot, there's, there's a playing field and it's bounded on the sides by like foul territory or out of bounds or whatever you want to call it. And it's, it's common knowledge that you, you don't play there. You know, anything goes there, that's the end of that. So, but you can play all you want to within the playing field. Now, what would your personal playing field be? It would be your, your skills, your resources, your, um, your finances, your charm, your personality, your level of enthusiasm for the game that you're playing, uh, your inclination, you know, toward, toward that game, your, your willingness to play the game. These are all... These would all come under that category of the bounds in which you play, that you're playing field. Now, and they give you the freedom to play the game. Uh, if your game is getting through law school, what would your playing field be? Okay, your playing field would be your studies, your books, your materials, your willingness to knuckle down and buckle down, and get through it, your, your keen you know, your, your wit, your, your work ethic, um, and all that sort of thing. Um, the next element, number two, would be obstacles. You got to have some really good obstacles or else you don't really have a really good game. You got to have some stuff that you have to overcome, you know, stuff that you need to, you know, like best um, and, and, and get over. Otherwise, there's no zest or joy in winning the game. There's, there's, there's no real awards in winning the game. Let's, let's say, oh, let's say we got a game scheduled between the the Rams and the Bengals, There's the two really good American football teams. Um, and um, it's gonna be a really good game because basically, you know, the obstacles that each team has got, the main obstacle is the other team. You know, this one wants to get to this one's goal and, and you know, this one's not gonna let it and the other way around. So it looks like a good team. So the Rams show up on the, the morning of the game, and uh, the Bengals aren't there. They, they all came down with uh, the flu or something. They, they, they can't show up, but it's okay because they've got a substitute team. They've got a substitute team, and that is the Greater Milwaukee Retired Ladies Latin Scrabble Team. Yes, and they're all on the field, you know, in their wheelchairs and their walkers. You know, the youngest rookie is 85 years old. And they're like, okay, ladies, we're going to get them. And you know, the Rams are like, oh. because this, this is this isn't a game at all. You know, that that's that's no obstacle, you know, and it's over in like five minutes. And there's it's not very pretty. There's blood all over the field, and you know, there's lawyers going all over the place, handing people, you know, lots of lawsuits and summonses and things. And it's, it's just it's not a game. That is not pretty. So Sad to say, or sorry to say, you know, part of a really good game is you got to have a really good thing that you're fighting against, you know, odds, obstacles, whatever you want to call them. Um, so if you don't, you're going to wind up making them up. And we'll get a little bit into that in a few minutes. So if you've never, if you've ever known anyone who like didn't have to work for a living, didn't have to do anything. They're just sort of idle rich. Um, 
you might have noticed that they're sometimes a little bit odd. They complain about odd things. They, they get into odd, odd adventures. Um, and, and some of these adventures are really weird. And, you know, you look in the paper or in the, in the media online, and you'll, you'll see some of these people getting into really weird things. You know, they got to have something to push against so that they can consider that they're playing some sort of a game. Otherwise, they'll go nuts. And it can get really screwy sometimes. And if you or someone you know has begun to act maybe a little strangely, getting into strange things, it's possible that the game that they were playing is over or they're not playing any game in particular, just sort of floating along in life without any purpose or target or anything like that. And that is the third element, which is the end goal, the target, the whole purpose of doing the whole thing to begin with. In football game, it's touchdown. In soccer, hockey, and a whole lot of other sports, it's the, uh, the goal. In chess, it's checkmate, you know. In life, it's, it's getting that person to say yes, whether it's for a date or for a, a closing a deal or whatever. Uh, it's finishing the project under deadline. It's getting that promotion, getting that raise, getting that scholarship, making it on that vacation, you know, all those things, the things that really give us zest in life. You know, yes, that sort of thing. But remember, once you've won the game or lost the game, the game is over. It's done. You can't continue playing it, you know. Uh, otherwise, it gets, it gets a little strange. You need to either expand the game that you're playing or find a new game, get a different game. Like if you recall our friend who uh, was working to get through law school, you know, that was his game to get through law school, graduate, you know, pass the bar and all that sort of thing. Okay, he did it. Hooray, he passed the bar. And now he is a lawyer and he's not doing very well at it. He, he's, he, he can't establish a practice. It doesn't go anywhere. He's not getting any clients or the clients that he's getting are kind of like, mm, you know, they don't pay or whatever. Well, it could be that he never really stopped playing the game of becoming a graduate of law school. He didn't end it. And he didn't begin the new game of setting up a successful law practice. You know, we, we've seen these in, in other places. You know, the guy falls in love with the girl, she falls in love with him, you know, and they're playing this game of courtship, courtship, you know, I love you, I love you, I love you more, you know, and it's very romantic and everything like that. And then they get married and that's lovely. They've won that game. That game is over. Now we have a new game called marriage. Some people don't realize that. They don't realize that, you know, it's an expansion of the game you know, with the, the, the dating and all that sort of thing. A whole different new game. So, you know, uh, actors will get into this sometimes also. Uh, they nail that part. They get that part. And it's terrific. And then for the next five years, they're still playing the game of trying to get that part. Even though they're trying out for other parts. But these other parts are different. See, so if things are getting a little slow or weird for you, if they're getting a little clenchy, a little tight, a little hard, a little strange, look over the games that you're playing right now. Is the game over and you didn't start a new game? Because if the game is over and the opponents have all gone home, you know, they've taken their showers, they've left the field, and they've gone home, there's nothing for you to do if you want to keep on playing the game. It'll be very exhausting playing the game by yourself. You know, imagine trying to play tennis against yourself. You know, you're running across and hitting the ball and running across and hitting the ball and running. You know, it's, it's, it can be very exhausting. Now, uh, my son was, was a, a successful actor and uh, he, had, he had this way of operating, which was very successful, which was he would get a part and he'd nail it, you know, like a, series regular or something like that in a TV show. And um, then he would have a meeting with his, with his manager and his manager wanted to, you know, hey, hooray for us, we did it, yay. And, 
And he would have none of it. He'd say, okay, here's a list of directors. I want you to contact for me. And uh, here's the kind of parts that I want to go after next. Boom, 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 boom. He's already into the next game. And um, that way he stayed fresh, you know, never, never got stuck in a success or a win or anything like that. Kept on going. Now, one more thing that uh, you want to know. Actually, there's a lot of things you want to know. But purposes of this webinar, is one more thing you want to know. And that is these, these three elements of a game are interrelated. They form a triangle. And like all triangles, if you make one side bigger, the other two sides get bigger. If you, want, if you shrink one side, the other two sides go down also. You may have experienced this in your life. So these three things, the playing field, the obstacles, and the end goal. Let's say there is a, uh, a guy, we'll call him Charlie, and he is the janitor of the fourth sub-basement of a high-rise office building, 99 floors. And he's got a very small game. This is a very small sub-basement, so his playing field is very small. It's like really one small hallway that he has to clean. And uh, there's one toilet and there's one broom closet. So his playing field is very small, see? And uh, his aims and his goals and all like that are very small, which is just clean the toilet, clean the hallway, clean the broom closet and so forth. And his obstacles are very small too. It's, it's, a, it's a woman named Ethel who comes in once a week and yells at him. So, it's a very small game and you can tell he's kind of a small person, you know, he's kind of like this all the time, you know. So one day, a junior executive from the 99th floor comes down to the sub-basement and he says, we've had our eye on you and we can tell you that you would be a fine, fine addition to our custodial staff. And we would like to bring you up, up, up to the 99th floor where you will be the chief assistant to the assistant chief custodial engineer, and you will have four hallways to clean, and you will have seven toilets, and three broom closets, and five women named Ethel who will come in once a week and yell at you. And so Charlie looks at so and he says, uh, do you have dental? And he says, yes, we have dental. Come, come. So he goes up to the 99th floor. He takes this new job. His, his triangle has expanded enormously. You know, he has a much broader playing field, right? Much broader playing field because he's got three hallways, seven bathrooms, seven toilets to, to clean and so forth. His obstacles have also increased because he now has five women named Ethel who come in and yell at him once a week. But that's okay because his aim, his goals, his purposes, his yearnings, or however you want to call it, they've also increased. And he wears a, a, a sign that says, you know, Charlie, chief assistant to the assistant chief custodial engineer, you know. So maybe for the first week or two, he's a little overwhelmed, you know. But now you can see there's kind of a new stature to him, a, a new a new grandness about him that wasn't there before, a new importance. Uh, he's, he's bigger in, in, in many, many respects. So people are like water. They take on the size and the shape of, of whatever game they're playing. Uh, if you're feeling a little small, uh, a, a little, you know, degraded and so on, take a look at the games that you're playing right now. Maybe they're too small for you. Maybe you need to expand them. Maybe you need to challenge yourself more. Maybe it's time to get bigger. On the other hand, if you're feeling a little bit overwhelmed, overwhelmed, maybe the game that you're playing is a bit too much for you. You know, see if you can reduce it a little tiny bit. You know, here's, here's an example of, of going both ways, okay? Um, let's say you've got a shop owner and he owns a little junior market off the main street. And, uh, you know, he's, he's got everything pretty much in, in place. He's, you know, 
his obstacles, you know, the things that you're up against, which is, you know, he's got to do the payroll, he's got to make sure that he's in compliance with local laws, he's got to make sure the food is fresh, and all that sort of thing. Uh, these are all the challenges he faces, and, and he faces them okay. And um, his playing field is pretty much within the bounds of the rules of the land and uh, the size of his uh, place and, you know, his own managerial skills and so forth and his obstacles, his goals are pretty much, you know, just to have a going concern. That's pretty much it. He's doing all right. You know, no problem. One day, a professional um, accident receiver comes in uh, who makes a living uh, having accidents in places of business and then suing the person. Uh, this person comes in and uh, trips over uh, some spilt milk and uh, gets an injury and then turns around and sues this guy. Now, he's got a choice. He's got a choice. He can either get rid of that problem, get rid of that additional obstacle by declaring bankruptcy, okay? He, he declares bankruptcy and goes out of business. So what happens is, one side of the triangle, he no longer has that obstacle, it's gone, but the other two sides go down now. His, his uh, playing field has gotten smaller. You know, it may be more difficult for him to start a new business now. His credit may be all loused up. And his, his own targets, his own yearnings and so on, they go down too. Everything is limited, but he did get rid of the problem. But you see, he reduced his triangle, he reduced his gain. See, on the other hand, if his obstacles went up, then he could also up the playing field and up his, his yearnings and his intentions and his purposes and all that sort of thing. How? He could turn around, counter sue that person. He could hire a detective who would then find out that that person makes a living doing this. He could call the, um, the, the local paper and say, Listen, I am a local shopkeeper and I'm being abused and so forth. And this is not okay. There ought to be laws against this sort of thing. And what happens, of course, is he, he wins the lawsuit. The other person goes to jail. And because of the publicity, his business booms. And he's able to, to now open a couple of franchise stores. So whenever you get attacked, whenever you feel, you know, like, like somebody's got it in for you, you know, like your obstacles have thing to do is to expand in any way that you can, rather than contract, unless you want to contract. So now in every game, there's a couple things you, also that you need. You need teammates. Teammates are nice, they're company, and you need opponents. Now, let's take a marriage. You've got these two people, and they're a team. They're a team against the world. You know, their opponents would be what? It'd be, you know, Bills, um, maybe the in-laws, um, you know, anything that is out there threatening their continued prosperity and their continued love and expansion of the family and all that sort of thing. When a marriage gets in trouble, dollars to donuts, you can put it in terms of they're no longer teammates, they are now opponents. And when the teammates become opponents, watch out. Because this opponent knows this opponent inside out, and this, op this opponent knows this opponent inside out. So it's not very good. It's not very good. So better to be on the same team against a common enemy, common opposition. You know, I, um, it's always best if you find yourself in a position where you, you might be in an argument with somebody, you know, and you don't really want to, see if you become, can become a teammate instead of an opponent, you know, in that argument. Find something that the two of you can, can rail against, you know. Or here's an example in, in, uh, in a profession. A friend of mine, uh, an actress, um, had a very clever way of going about her auditions and uh, it very often worked. 
which is she would be up over here, like on the stage, doing the audition or reading a part or whatever. And the director would be over here watching. This is back when they used to do live auditions, you know, instead of by video. But anyway, so the director would be down here talking to her and she'd be up here talking to him, kind of like opponents, especially if the director was saying, listen, what I want you to do is more of a this, 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 this. So what she would do instead of staying up there, she would get off the stage, sit down right next to him and say, okay, now what you want, and she'd be gesturing at the stage, is this, 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 this. You want, you want me to do this, 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 right? And the director says, yeah, I want you to do this, this, this. And this way, they were kind of like teammates against the problem, whatever it was, that was over there on the stage. So it wasn't like she's up on the stage and he's down here and they're like <laughs> at each other. They become a teammate. And more often than not, she would get the part because of that. Just a handy little thing. Now, one more thing about games. Why do you play a game? Why do you play a game? Well, there's fun. Yes, that's true. But you want to play the game to win. You would be amazed at how many people play a game either not to lose or to participate. They play a game just to participate. And that's not, not really a way to play a game. Um, General Motors in uh, 1985, I think it was, were a little disturbed by these uh, Japanese car firms, Toyota, what was called at that time Datsun, it's now called Nissan, and Honda were coming out with these very reliable, fuel-efficient cars and uh, so on, and people were buying them like mad. And General Motors was still making these great big gas-guzzling uh, uh, behemoths. And they figured, well, you know, we, we can do that. We, we can have a, we can do a fuel-efficient, uh, good, reliable car. We can do that. So they came up with a car called the Saturn. Some of you may remember the Saturn car. It wasn't a bad car, it was okay. You know, it mainly had plastic doors, plastic fenders, you know, the transmission sometimes was problematic, you know. So they, they, they weren't really playing to win that game. They were playing to say, we can do this too, we can do this too. And Honda and um, Toyota and Datsun were not amused by this. And uh, they really poured the coals on, on their marketing. And um, since General Motors wasn't really so com committed to the Saturn, uh, the Saturn just kind of got worse and worse. And finally in 2002, 17 years later, they phased it out. They did not play that game to win. They played the game to participate. It was just sort of a me too. So if you're gonna play a game, play it to win. You know, if you're, if you're presented with a game, and a choice whether or not to play that game. If you're going to play it, play it to win. If you're not going to play it, get the heck as far away from it as possible. Do whatever you can to not play the game, okay? Because what is life? Life is a game. And that's all I have to say for now. So if you like this webinar, please be persuaded to like and subscribe. Meanwhile, love each other, take your vitamins, observe posted speed limits, play nice, and never lose sight of who you are. Never, never, never lose sight of who you are. So long for now.